So welcome to Christina Wallen, Group MD of Harp Wallen Executive Search and Recruitment and myself, Deborah Pierce, Joint Managing Director, SLC Representation. Thanks for joining us today, Christina, on what is day 21 of our lockdown countdown. Thank, thank you for the invite. Um, for a good excuse to put the mascara on again. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, I've got three questions to ask you. And the first thing that I'd like um, to ask you is if you can give us a brief update um, on the recruitment landscape as it is and any prediction as to how you think 2021 is going to play out. Yes, well, I mean, a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, um, looking into the crystal ball, um, I think. But uh, I think what we predicted earlier in the pandemic um, is that uh, there will be a, a big return, particularly for the interim market. Um, I think people with good project management skills, with good rounded skills, are going to find that they're very much needed for those businesses that have um, cut back because they've been obliged to um, and because it is there's so much uncertainty about where we're going to see the opportunities coming and where people are going to have to pivot their skills to acquire new skills for, for the way forward. So we, we relaunched our Flex Exec register um, earlier in the pandemic, and I think we will see a good wealth of talent there available for interim skills as and when we come back. I think the other thing for 2021 that we predict is that a lot of people, um, you know, leaders, managers and, you know, candidates and clients that we're speaking to, um, feel as though for obvious reasons their careers have been put on hold and their their decisions to look elsewhere and to um, you know perhaps look for their next career move have just been you know stabilized and so I think we will see some natural movement from people who um, whilst they've learnt a lot through the challenges of this both in terms of leadership and developing skills of you know uh, restructuring and reorganising um, and implementing the, the furlough schemes and everything else, I think they will then look to move as well. So I think there will be a lot of opportunity. My fear um, is that we've already lost a lot of skilled and talented people from, from our industry sector, and I hope we can do a lot to um, re-attract them back into the industry when things come back, which they will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're, we're all agreed that they'll come back. And that's really interesting. Um, your comment that that you make there um, about losing people um, from the industry. I think um, we were talking earlier and we were talking about how um, our industry has been particularly badly affected and how people may look for more security um, elsewhere for the longer term. But we are travel people at heart, aren't we? And, and we work we in this industry for yeah. the passion. So. Hopefully. I, very, I very rarely um, speak to people who've left the industry that don't get back in touch with us and say, can we, you know, um, if you anything back in travel, I've learned a lot outside, but my love and my heart and my passion is in this fantastic industry. Yeah, so let's hope they come back. Moving on to innovation. Um, is there anything that's caught your eye during this period since March? Um, what have you seen that's, that's been innovative that you've thought, gosh, that's clever and maybe it wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for this this point in history? Well, I think I think there's been a lot of innovation and I mean, across lots of sectors. And, and forgive me if I don't tackle travel, because I think there are people more um, equipped to talk about the exciting developments within travel. Um, I I think the, the sort of highlights and the things that have really struck me have been particularly within the um, hospitality sector. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think those who've got it right have got it very right and that will stand them in good stead going forward. Um, you know, I think one of my, my personal favourites without um, seeming to flip is probably the pub app. I mean, as somebody at five foot two with limited bar presence, surprisingly, um, <laughs> table service has been a a complete joy. Um, I think also the, you know, family businesses, fishmongers, um, butchers that normally supply to pubs and restaurants um, have reinvented themselves. Um, certainly we've started using a, a fishmonger that I never would have used, used before. 
I think high end restaurants uh, where they, um, you know, the Steins of this world where they do all of the, the prep and they deliver you with your menu and you can put your final touches for special occasions. I think um, that's, you know, some great innovation that's keep, kept those businesses going. Um, and again, I, you know, come back to pubs. I mean, uh, they, we went to one where they had implemented a lot of wheels on screens, but uh, screens on wheels rather, rather um, that were really tastefully done. They were sort of fluted perspex and wood effect. So they looked like old fashioned screens and they, because they could be wheeled around, you could adjust the size of the table to comply with the ever changing COVID regulations. And I thought whoever designed those, is definitely on tour because they were very sympathetic. They were they were clean and simple, but um, very, you know, sort of uh, effective and tasteful. Yeah, that's really interesting. I, I like your focus on the pubs and <laughs> I can see where you've been spending your time yeah. while it's locked down. Yeah. Or dreaming about maybe, dreaming about. <laughs> dreaming about. But I think you're right. I think there is a real acceleration in in technology and a, and a thirst for it. I went to a park yesterday and there was a massive queue for the coffee shop. And I said to my husband, oh, gosh, why hadn't they got an app? Why couldn't we order our coffee when we got out of the car and then have it have it ready when we got to the, the coffee shop? And it's it's I think it's just been a great acceleration, hasn't it, of things that we were already utilising. Um, but it's just sped up completely. Yes. Into yeah, I completely agree. And um, and. Uh, exactly the parks around us there is an app where, where you can order order from the table but yeah, yeah but you're you're right and 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 i think um you know th those businesses will you know that have innovated have done really really well um sadly for the equally there are those that haven't adapted and um i think they will suffer because the mm. whole experience is then too clinical yeah absolutely and moving on to our final question, which is our penultimate question in travel. When the borders are all open again across the world, hopefully, definitely by this time next year, if not by the summer of next year, and we're all able to travel where and when we want, what's the first destination on your list? Where are you going? Well, this is a really difficult one um, because, well, as you know, my family live in Western Australia, so it would have to be to visit them, I think. And... Um, um, and I would really hope to, to explore a lot of the places in, in WA and make a big trip of that. Um, but if I'm, if I'm allowed to come back via somewhere, um, mm -hmm. please, then that would be Vietnam and Cambodia. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I have to have to do a few multiple destinations if I'm going to tie in that trip. So see family, um, but also very keen to get back to Cambodia and Vietnam after a fabulous holiday on the Mekong. Oh, marvellous. Well, that's music to, to our ears at SLC. We're delighted that you're going to go to Western Australia and that you're going to disperse and, and go and uh, go and wander out yonder um, and see some more of WA. But we're also equally pleased that you'll be coming home via Vietnam. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you Absolutely. for your time today, Christine, and we really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. Good to see you. Thank you.